<laughs> Let me get rearranged. I was sewing till the very last second, you guys. Okay, good morning. Good morning. It's Sew Together Tuesday. We are back. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. And we are here at the Quilters Market in Tucson, Arizona. So very excited Ooh. to be here. Yay! Yay. Very excited. Yay. Um, we were at, <laughs> if you missed it, last week we were up at Rustic Horseshoe uh, in northern Arizona. She lives in Cornville. It's uh, Rena Dearden. And we were with her last week. She is a designer of stuffed animals and i wanted to remind you guys one because i think it was a super fun episode to do where we got to just talk all about stuffies which is kind of my favorite thing to make and then um also the code that she had that we are doing a fundraiser and sale on her stuff is still going so i wanted to remind you guys that that's still happening the code uh should come up it's cuddle 30 and you can do that at rustichorseshoe.com and all of the money that is raised by using that code goes to the arizona equestrian e equine equine there we association go or something. Yep. rescue yep. association Gosh. oof i'm sorry um it's in the blog post from last week so it's a it's a horse rescue organization that um they're raising the money for so rena is gathering all of the money from the sales over the two weeks from last week until next monday and everything what am i doing oh i'm okay i'm adjusting a the light there we go um, <laughs> so all of the money that's raised from that goes to that organization so i just wanted to remind you guys if you didn't get that order in go do it now um her patterns are great so super fun that's what we did last week and then we spent a week up in northern arizona which was super fun and hawk and i had a great time and then yesterday we all the way down the state and came down to Tucson, which neither of us have been to before. So it's kind of exciting. We're at the Quilters Market, which is a super cute little shop here in Tucson. And um, come on up. So we're here with Tanya. She is the owner, Tanya Freeman, right? Yes. Okay. So you're the owner. And we were talking yesterday. How, when did you buy the store? So I bought it two years ago, September of 2019. So pretty new to this. Yeah. Pretty new. So what, what do you think the, the biggest lesson has been for you? Oh my goodness. It's well, we had a pandemic, right? Right, right. We did. Just in the middle of it. And and you're so, still open. But then the and thing you're still is, open. is that yeah. we have such a wonderful community here in mm -hmm. Tucson that everybody wanted us to succeed. Yeah. And so without the community, it may be a different story, mm -hmm. but because we've had so many wonderful people. Right. And you get I would assume you get a lot of travelers or seasonal oh, um, things. Yeah. Especially during the winter time, we right. have so many winter visitors yeah. that love to come here. Yeah, it was really fun because we posted yesterday on the I Love Cuddle group, which we have. And um, I said, oh, we're, gonna be, we're at Quilter's Market. I've got this stuff. I've got the kids, blah, blah, blah. And people are like, oh, I love going to Quilter's Market when I come to Tucson. I was like, a lot of people come through Tucson is what I realized. Is a lot do. of people come through yeah. here. They stop here. It's a great, great shop. She's got a ton of cotton and quilts and all sorts of, you've a real variety, a lot of kits though, right? Oh yeah. We yeah. specialize in making different kits, um, cuddle kits we mm -hmm. have. And then we really love like Charlie Harper. Uh -huh, I saw that. Kate I love Charlie so we Harper have a lot too. of different fun stuff. Very cool. Very cool. So we have, the, we talk, talk about kits. We have kits for the project today. I opened mine and used it, but these cute little kits that are available. People, we have extras, people can buy them, yeah. right? So yeah, do they need to call to the store? Them? Yeah, so they'll call the store. Um, our phone number is 520-747-8458. And you can call and get either the pencil kit or the little Ellie. Or the elephant. That we're going to do. Right. So if yeah. you've been wanting to make the elephant and been struggling because you didn't want to like buy all the different fabrics or whatever she has those kits put together with the pattern and the eyes right yeah, it yeah. so it includes all of it and then we have a tutorial already on youtube for how to do that so if you want to follow that if you can't be here in class it's way better in class but if you can't be here you can always watch the tutorial on youtube and uh, make your own elephant they're super cute i'm really excited about that yeah. class so okay well good thank you so much i thank really do appreciate you. it how long has the store been around in total so we've been here over 17 years Seven, in this location. In this location. So you just took it over, just basically kept it running in, right here. And yeah, oh, that's super cool. Yeah. Great. Very nice. Well, thank you for having us. I really appreciate We're it. so excited to have you. I'm really excited to do this. Awesome. Okay, great. Thank Thanks, you. Donna. Thank you. Thanks. So you can also visit, um, is it quiltersmarket.com, correct? Yeah. Is the website. So you can visit quiltersmarket.com. She's got a whole bunch of stuff there. Um, it is a great shop. So if you are ever in Tucson, make sure and stop. I ogled yesterday at all sorts of stuff. She had a bunch of the Tilda stuff, which I really like. So <laughs> we had a really good time looking at all the stuff. Oh, here's the little kit. So he, this is how they come. 
Okay, so she does have these kits available. Comes with the pattern, a couple of little colored pencils. And she will ship it right to you. She will ship it right to you. Yep. Exactly. So if you want to make the pencil too, this is a super cute color combination. Thank you. Um, that it, we're going to work on today. This pencil pattern is a really easy one. And we're going to learn a few different skills with working with it. But I really like this one because it will teach us some things about working with cuddle, but it's super flexible. So you can use all sorts of things. Yes. What happens if you share the video? Oh, oh he's got money. <laughs> Every I'm like, you have a question, huh? Um, yes. I was raising my hand. <laughs> so make sure to share the video. We will choose a winner at the end of the video. We'll be giving away a beginner box, which you probably saw a little bit um, in the video at the beginning. We show how that works. There's six projects, three yards of fabric, and um, we will send you one of those, which is a great way to get started working with Cuddle. And in fact, I think one of those has the pastel version of the fabric we're using today. So there you go. Um, so make sure you share the video oh, yeah. with your sewing friends and we will choose a winner at the very end. Okay. So stick around. We will do that. All right. Was that all I was supposed to say? I think right so. Now? So show us what we're making. Okay. So this on. is what Look we're making today. So this is a couple of different variations on a theme. Okay. Some different um, ways of doing it. This is um, basically what it is. So you can choose it in the pattern. You'll see some ways that you can do it that have like print here and a solid color hill. That's what we're going to do today. But you can do it also a, color, um, a solid color and a solid color. You could do you could do designs on both. I think it'd be super fun to do with the tie dye ones. OK, uh, but we're going to learn how to sew the curves on this and how to do that little point and then to sew the circle on the backside. OK, so which is a great skill builder. And especially if you like making stuffies like I do, learning how to do this is super important because it's the pad on a lot of their feet. Sort of say that like looks a, like a foot. This would be a huge huge little leg foot combo right there. I kind of like it. Okay. So the other thing is the one that we're using today, we are using um, latte is the color here, right? Okay. Yes. I'll make sure <laughs> so it's latte is the color here. You can use any of this. Is, this one I think is a natural. You could use any color down there. We have a whole bunch of different brown shades that you could use for the pencil wood. Okay. So flexible. It's a flexible pattern. And I like that. Also, it doubles as a bolster pillow and works perfectly under your neck. Just saying. All sorts of things you could do with this. Okay? Super fun. And at the end, I'll show you another variation that takes it to a different level. Okay? All right. So let's get rid of those pencil or pencils. All right. So in the pattern, you can go ahead and if you go to the blog, there's a blog post all about it and includes the um, fabric that we're using and all that good stuff and downloads for the pattern. The patterns are free downloads from our website. And you can just go to um, shannonfabrics.com slash blog and you will be able to download this pattern. Sorry. OK. And in it comes the instructions, Oops. the instructions and a pattern sheet. OK, you'll want to trace out the pattern. And if you do that onto cardboard or thicker cardstock, it'll it'll help to trace around these really easily. Make sure, of course, that you transfer all of those markings. All right. Super important. OK, good. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about the ingredients. I did that today. You did. I remembered the list. You did. Okay. So to make this, you're going to need a half a yard of cuddle. You will have extra. So you should be able to make two of them. Um, with, and then have some scraps to make some of those scrap buster patterns that we have. You'll need an eight by eight scrap of cuddle three for the tip. So that is the actual pencil color that you're doing. A 15 by 18 piece of cuddle three for the wood that, you know, the part of the pen, the wood part of the pencil. You'll also download that free colored pencil pattern from shannonfabrics.com. You can get it easily from the blog if you go over there. You want to have a 9014 stretch needle. We love a stretch needle for working with cuddle. The 9014 is just a stronger needle, but the stretch is really important. Uh, you want a felt tip marker or ballpoint pen. Hand sewing needle, because we are going to have to hand sew that shut at the end because we're stuffing it. Long flower head pins. I love mine from Clover. I'll show you what I've got. Micro serrated scissors. It'll make it easy to cut. I have Karen K. Buckley's and my Kai's today, but Maury makes a really great uh, micro serrated scissor as well. A point turner from Clover is the one I have. Polyester fiber fill. We'll talk about that again. We're using the kind from Fairfield, and I have a couple of kinds to show you. We'll want polyester thread. I'm using Metro C by Mettler because it's nice, it's strong, and works really well. Rotary cutter and match from Ulfa, and my walking foot. So 
this is one of those. So this is a little bit like the stuffed animals that we've done before. <laughs> was that just a belly shot? Is that what that was? Basically, yeah. <laughs> Started, it, there, was, there, was, there was no preview. <laughs> I was <Shrug>. guessing. <laughs> no, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, oh, this is one of those like a, like a, um, like the stuffies where sometimes, so I will recommend that you use the walking foot, but sometimes just using the regular foot is easier because on this project, because it's like a stuffed animal in the same way, we're gonna use a quarter inch seam. So normally when we're working with cuddle, we're almost always gonna use a half an inch seam allowance. With this one, we're actually gonna use a quarter inch because it works better on the curves. So that's what I found is that if I use a bigger seam allowance, I have a harder time getting those curves to work as nicely, especially because we have, we're working with convex and concave, right? word um curves okay i say these things and i'm like is that the right word it was right you're was right the right word okay you're smart so i <laughs> so these are the pattern pieces that you're going to get in the pattern okay is that we've got this is the tip of the pencil or the lips uh, this is the wood part of the pencil and this is the end of the pencil and then you're also going to cut a uh, rectangle I want to check and make sure I'm giving you the right measurements, 12 and a half inches long and 15 inches wide. Okay. So these are my pattern pieces that I'm going to do first. I oh, know I lost the red already. How did that happen? Oh, thank you. Okay. I didn't lose it. I just moved it. And then that was, in oh, maybe you moved it. It was that nope. side of the table. Nope. I don't know. Nope. Not it. Okay. <laughs> so this is how I did that. I've got my friction pen today. So this is the friction felt tip pens, which I like. You could use the uh, fancy so together Tuesday Sharpie if you want to. If I'm trying to keep a, um, oh yeah, thank you. If I'm trying to keep a finer line, I actually really do like the fine liner. Um, I like this one better than the friction pen that you see at most quilt shops, which is a ballpoint pen. That one tends to catch on the back of the fabric for me, but this one works really nicely. Can, to I, just can you show me the tip? Slide. Yep. There it is. It's, yeah, it's not a ballpoint. It's a felt tip. It's a felt tip. So I'll just show you like, back up 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 there we go so i'm just going to hold it on there i can just trace around it that's what i'll do okay so i just bring trace right around it all right make sure i mark all these things here's my center and then i try to usually write on it it says tip but you might not be able to see that got it okay? we didn't blow this pattern up at all this is a nope. 100 100 percent. this is the way it's made this is the size it'll be so if you wanted to change the size you absolutely could but make sure that you change them all the same amount Okay, so we've got the uh, tip of the pen or pencil, and then I've also traced out the wood the same way. And I've marked here the uh, quarter marks for when I want to put this onto the other part. All right, so same, this is going to match to here. So this is the hard part. Hey, there's this is lady that... from Audrey, the la lady from Portland <laughs> named, named Audrey. Audrey that's uh, in the chat. Hi, Audrey. <laughs> Hi, Audrey. <laughs> so if you see this. That's, that's her daughter. It is. <laughs> so if you see this, this is a bigger curve than here. But if I overlap them to where the half inch, like there's a, from the quarter inch seam allowance. Can you see how they overlap in there? Yeah. You might I, not. I think I can, so here's actually. my edge right here. If they overlap about a half an inch, this quarter inch is where they're going to match up. So this always confuses people because this looks like it would never fit onto this. The size is very different, but that's why. It's because the quarter inch seam allowance here and the quarter inch seam allowance here will match. Okay. I hope that made a little bit of sense. It did. And, All right. and it's a good note because that seems wrong. It seems very <laughs> wrong. All right. So we're going to go ahead and cut this out and then I'll measure the other piece and trace out my circle for the end of the pencil. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments and Hawk will tell me, tell me and I will help. I'll do them. my best to work them into the conversation. Okay, so you can totally use your scissors and do this, but you can also use your rotary cutter, which is just faster. With the C3, it's not, opinion. it's not a big problem. For, it's not a big for problem at all. Off the, cutting off the uh, the nap. The nap, exactly. You'll see that there's a little bit of mess when I'm done. I'll give it a little shake and we'll be fine. All right, so it's really not too much mess. The biggest thing is not to yank it too hard because there's definitely some stuck on there. Okay. And then I'll just give it a little, little whack. All right, and then basically that is ready to go. Okay, I didn't talk about it, but when I did trace these on there, I traced it on there so that the um, nap would go down. 
if that you look my, at and that if was you, my goal. There you go. If you look at the pattern pieces, the arrow they shows marks. you which way the nap should go as you're laying that out. Again, don't panic if you don't get it right. But it does make it so that when you put it all on there, it'll all kind of go smoothly down the pencil. Okay. So this one I'm going to cut out with my rotary cutter. And I'm also going to use my scissors on this one because of that little bit right there. Okay. So one of the things that I found is that you can do this two ways. And actually, I did it the other way on this one's on the other one. So maybe I'll do it this way. Is you can actually leave this, pin this, and then use this as your cut edge, but not actually cut it. Oh. Okay. And that sometimes makes it a little bit easier because this is it's more stable, it's bigger. So it's easier to control this whole thing, but use this as your raw edge. So, so you don't have to inch, cut that little divot out necessarily you don't have to. as long as you're paying attention to where the line is when you sew. Exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over this and mark it a little bit better so that when I'm sewing it, I might be able to see it better and you will too. Okay. So that's going to be my cut edge, but I'm not going to cut it off right now. All right. So that's my, my faux raw edge. Okay. And that little, that little divot just makes it kind of round at the tip a little bit better. Okay, so we've got these pieces. I'm going to put them over here. So when I lose them later, that's where I put them. Okay. <laughs> so everybody will know. Like, I think you put them in the basket. They're there. Right there. Everybody. <laughs> They're right there. <laughs> really good at losing that stuff. Okay, <laughs> so now <laughs> what I want to do is I want to measure a piece that is 15 inches wide. And the 15 inches, yes, this is where I always question myself, is going to go this direction across the width of the fabric okay if i have to fix that in just a second i'll let you know but i think that's right i just did it and i still confuse myself okay so i'm gonna take this and measure 15 inches okay make sure that it's fairly square it's close enough Okay, so there's 15, and then 15. Okay, so I'll draw those, and then I can come back over here and just make those lines match, basically. So you can see, if you come over the top here, Hawk, yeah, you can see around. that they don't match perfectly. Okay, so you can see this one. If I kept this going, it would go up that way, clear over here. Oh, okay. Okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an end and an end, and I'm just going to make them match up. Like, there you go. That's where you're supposed to be. All right. So I just, like I've told people before in classes, you are the boss of your fabric. Make it do what you want it to do. We're going to give it a straight line. And that's where it's going to be. Okay. So now I'm measuring at 12 and a half inches. I'm going to do the same thing. So I've made a mark. Made a mark. I'm going to go ahead and make these match up. Okay, so there we go. So when we're doing this, this seems like a very small piece that I could actually just lay my ruler down and then just cut it without making all of the marks. But as you can see, like lines will tend to shift just a little bit and it's a lot easier for me to do all the marking first and then go ahead and cut it out. I'm a lot more accurate that way. So um, I suggest that with everything that you're trying to, trying to measure. Okay. I don't have too wobbly of a hand yet. Um, so I can cut along this line without my ruler. But if you are using your ruler, you absolutely can to cut along this line. The thing that I would suggest that you do is use something, use uh, one of these, like this one has the creative grids. This is what the shop had. It has the little grippy bits on it. There's also the oh, stuff called grippy pads. from OD that you can spray on the back of it that will make it hold on to it better. So sometimes I don't like using rulers because they tend to slide a lot. So if I'm holding it real hard, I can get it to not move, but I tend to have it slip on me. Really, I mean, it slips a lot. So I tend to use grippy on the back or um, mark my lines and then cut it with the rotary cutter or scissors. And that way I feel like I get a more accurate cut because the back of the fabric is slippery. Is slippery a real word? It is now. Okay. Ta-da. Good. <laughs> All right, so here is the body of my pencil. So I'm going to fold that and put it over here. I'm going to see. 
I should be able to. Oh, look. it's over there. It's right where it's supposed to be. A place for everything and everything in its place. So my mom always said. Well, she's on here, so. Oh, good. Yep, it's family. It's family See, time. Mom, I learned a little bit. I will tell you, it's not really true, but, you know, I try. I really do. We were talking about RV living this morning with some of the folks here in the audience, and it was all about how organized you need to be in order to have everything put away so that you can move, for example. And you'll notice and I stayed is... out of that conversation. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Organization is not my strong point. <laughs> Staying organized we're, is we're, definitely not. We're doing, we're doing great. <laughs> all Be right. Between RV living and then bringing all of uh, your sewing supplies oh and being goodness. able to, to set up the show every week, I, I feel like we're doing really well. I at least found my sewing machine the other day. That was good. Uh, it helps that it just rides into the kitchen table, though, right? Yes. Like, if I well, lost it, we'd be in trouble. Okay, so I'm just going to use my little... What city did we leave it in? Yeah, yeah that's city. not good. Not good. We're not going back to, to next year. Uh, so right now, I'm just using my Karen K. Buckley scissors. And I'm just cutting right around here. The, these are micro serrated, just like the Kai ones are, and uh, the Fomori as well. And uh, what I really like is that they grab the fabric really nicely. So they will uh, cut really well. And be able to keep a straight line whereas i feel like the ones that are not serrated have a much harder time grabbing these little bits of fabric and i do have my huge one i used those earlier for the straight lines because these let me see if i can find them again these are my big kais so i have little ones and big ones and those are also micro serrated so these are also micro serrated those that's what the se is guys. here Okay, so there's so 72 a, out of the glare on that there. There's 72 80s and 72 50 SE. So the SE is the serrated. So if you look for that, those will those will cut really nicely too. They're just you know big for this this um, project. A shout out to the, um, what, what's his name, Darren? Uh, Devin. Devin. Sorry, sorry, Devin. Devin just sent them back to her sharpened, yeah. freshly, freshly sharpened. Yeah, so sharpened. if you didn't know, Kai will actually sharpen your scissors for you. So they have a small fee and they sharpen your scissors for you, even the serrated ones, which we will tell you, you can't do. They do because I cut pins sometimes. I don't actually cut them. I just try and then it just ruins my scissors. So I send them back. Um, yeah, I'll get they, better at it They someday. do a, a tidy little mail order scissor sharpening service. Yep. Yeah, they are great. Okay, so I've got all my pieces. So here's my pencil body, my pencil end, the wood piece, and the tip. All right, so I've got all of these pieces. I'm going to put these to the side because we're going to start with the tip and sewing this onto here. So there are a couple ways of doing this. In the pattern, we're going to sew this to this, and then these two will get sewn onto the body. I've had people want to sew this to this to the body, which you can do but you will need to change the pattern slightly because there are seam allowance differences. Okay. So I'm just saying, if you follow the pattern, it'll be easier. I've heard that. Don't get too, I, gen, gen, generally speaking, generally speaking, <laughs> but I haven't really learned that very well. So I don't always follow the pattern, but I'm telling you, that's what you got to do. Okay. So I'm going to quit pins at my centers so that I can get those to match up because I put lines there, but I can't really see them very well. So if I put a pin in here, I can make them match. Okay. So I'll make that match, take that pin out. I will make this match here. So again, it's, you know, end to end centers. Centers, just one center. Okay. So we'll do this one. And then we'll pin in between and make sure that it gets exactly where we want it to, especially because it's different sizes and they're kind of weird. If you start here and you try to get over here, it's going to end about here and you're going to be really frustrated. So make sure that you're pinning the ends, the middle, and then we'll make it fit in between. Yeah, that really didn't look like it was going to fit. I know. Um, Isn't it weird? Yeah. That's. But it does. That's magic. You just have to make it. Make it fit. And then when we sew it, it'll have just the tiniest little bit of a kind of a little bit of a gather there, but not really. Especially but after we stuff in. it, right? Yeah, it eases in really nicely. Okay, so we do the same thing. It's a little bit like the, the feet. Because see, if I pull it like this, you see how that is? I, I, 
I see it. It's weird, right? I don't believe it, but there we are. Okay. We've talked about it before. So these are both cuddle three. If you use a digital cuddle, which is what the um, spectrum is, that rainbow color that we're using today, that's a digital cuddle and it's a little bit thinner, the backing is. And so it will want to curl on you a little more. So this may be a little bit more of a fight if you try to use a digital cuddle here. Okay. Just so you know. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and sew this. Do you remember which way I sewed it before? I think it was this way. That was the second way with the with the lips up. Was it the second way I with the lips so. up? Let's give it a try and see what happens. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. No, I'm gonna do it this way. You're right, because what I'm what I'm brainstorming here, guys, is that I have more fabric on this side. So generally speaking, we want to put the side that has more on it to ease in underneath. That's like just like a way of doing it. But I also feel like if I do it that way, I'm more likely to get puckers because I've got so much fold it up under here that I won't be able to see the seam if it's starting to pucker. I'm gonna try it this way. I think this was the way that I liked it better. So I'm gonna stick this under a bit and then come back and I'm gonna grab my stiletto. So I've got my little, you see I did some sewing earlier. I've been yep, just waiting. Let's talk about this. <laughs> let's go ahead and talk so, about that stiletto. So I've got my little stiletto, which is basically my second, my third hand. And I can use this to guide the fabric. So I'm going to keep this with me so that when I'm sewing this, if I need it to kind of pull the fabric through, I'm going to. So come on up. We've got the thread up here. So we've got 100% polyester, metrosine thread. Okay. So this is just Mettler metrosine. And I've got a straight stitch and a 3.5 stitch length. Could probably move it to a three. Let's do that. We'll see how it works. Okay. And because it's stuffy, a stuffy. I know I Mike. To... Michael's trying to figure out how to re retype in a banner. Sorry. <laughs> okay, three point five or three. Use whatever whatever suits you. Okay. You got and it. I'm just gonna take the pins out as I go and make this kind of work itself around here. Okay. So using this stiletto, I can kind of keep things in place where I want them to. And just use my fingers, kind of let it do a little bit at a time, take out a pin, kind of work my way. So you're not going to be able to do this really fast. Oof. And, uh, did you just play pin chicken? I really did. I really did. And I couldn't get my foot off the gas fast enough. So I was just go for it. And okay. again, we're in, because we're basically, this is basically a stuffy, you are doing a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Quarter of an inch ish. You can see it's not perfect. It's fine. Okay. okay. So it might be a little weird there. It totally works. We'll make sure we don't get any real puckers because any real puckers will actually show. So there's a tiny one. I'm actually going to be weird and fix that. Okay. Let's do this. One. So you just okay. snuck so in just, there with the tip of the scissors and you just, I just snipped that, snipped little, it. that okay. little thread right there. So now you can see I have a little a spot that I'm going to go back over and sew and I'm going to sew it from this side so I can make sure that I don't get another little pucker. So I'm just gonna start it where I was sewing before. If I can see my stitch, there we go. So see, that helps that the white was on that side because I'm sewing with red right now. But the red's on this side, so, or the white's on this side so I can see it. Okay, so I'm gonna back stitch just a little. I'm gonna give this a little tug as it comes through. Make it line up. Do another little back stitch. Do a lock stitch. Cut my thread. Okay. And the only reason I do that is because cuddle three tends to show puckers. So it'll show any of your little oopsies. A little, a little more than say a Lux or. Yeah, exactly. One of the longer naps. So I'm like trying to Got grab, it. is that an oopsie or is that just the way the nap is tucked in? I think it's just the way that the nap is tucked in right there. Okay. So. All right. Again, with the stiletto, you're just kind of like ruffling the, uh, the nap out of the seam line. Yep, Got it. exactly. All right. So now here is a little trick for you. So this likes to fold up. So I'm going to come out under here. What just happened there. Okay. I can't see it from that side, so I'm going to leave it. Um, okay. So I'm going <laughs> to... Is it soft? That's really my... Those have lost their sharp tip. So well, I just need... Big boys. I'm just there bringing up the big boys. <laughs> just, I'm just using the very end of it there. But they're sharpening. And the you are actually you're clipping the seam allowance, which you don't actually do that often. No, but it's because I want it to lay open. 
a little bit more. Okay. Okay. So I wanted to be able to lay flat. So that's what I have to do to make that happen. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this together. So this is why I want to put it together with the tip and then the body is because when I put it together, otherwise, I have to get two seams to match. This one, I'm only going to get one seam to match. So right now, we're just matching one seam. Okay, I'm going to pin it on either side of that seam so that they match really nicely. Okay, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to go sew this. So this is how I get seams to match perfectly, is I go and I make them match perfectly, and then I'll pin the rest of it. All right. Oh, I was wondering why we hadn't pinned the whole thing yet. Now yeah. I understand. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this to match. And then if it doesn't match, all I have to take out is this little bit. Okay. So there we go. So that matches. Nice. All okay. right. So if it didn't match, all I have to take out is this much stitches instead of this whole side. All right. So that's why I do it that way. All right. So now I'll pin the rest of it. So this is what we do on the um, patchwork quilts too, to get the, the seams to match nicely, which we're going to be doing in a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. Remember? What um, is that? Cotton? Cotton puzzle? Uh, no, nope. That nope, is I'm wrong. Uh, Sorry. so much love in Granbury. There we go. We're going to be doing that. We'll talk about it at the end where we're going next. It's a super it's cute little exciting. shop outside of Dallas. We'll be doing patchwork. Yay. Yeah. Okay, so we're just going to pin the rest of the way. I mean, everybody uses cuddle for the backs of, of, uh, of cotton quilts. And uh, and actually getting to, we just crashed. No, we, no, we didn't. I think that was Michael switching <laughs> over to the behind the scenes camera. You got me. <laughs> nice. All right, um, so now we're going to go ahead and sew this. But the patchwork quilt's great because it's all cuddle on the front. Exactly. You can do it front and That's back. That's fun. Super soft. Okay, so right. now you remember I drew this little line in here. This is my raw edge, so I'm going to use that as where I need my quarter inch seam to go from this edge. So this is the, the quote unquote cut edge. Okay, bring it over here and scoop around. Okay, so I'm going to get in just a little bit again, just so that I can kind of come off that edge. This is where I'm going to use my stiletto and make sure that it keeps feeding in, kind of guide it along that quarter inch. Nice and slow. And it's like a, it's a lot of rotation there really quickly, right? Yeah, so exactly. in between every stitch, I watched your left hand guide that around the corner pretty, yeah. pretty so just, aggressively. It's taking your time is helpful. So now this is the area that I already stitched. So I'm just going to stitch right over where I was before because I know that's going to match now. I can't really mess that up. Okay. And then I just go straight down. Okay, and I'll come down here. And notice I've got red on one side and white on the other. Oh, my, we go because my, your bobbin thread side. is white? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Okay. So, but look at this. Can't tell at all. All right, that's the joy. Doesn't matter what color it is. All right, so there I've got my little curved bit that actually worked pretty well. Okay. I see that, yep. So at this point I can clip it off. Turn it inside out. And I have a little pencil lead. Very nice. And that, that, that really uh, makes a nice rounded tip without it being too pointy. Exactly. So that's what that'll do. All right. So now we'll get the body ready for it. Okay. So then I have my 15 inch by 12 and a half inch. And it's supposed to be, so this is, this is where I had to do my following the pattern thing. It's supposed to be seven and a quarter by 12 and a half. So here's my 12 and a half, which means it's seven and a quarter that way. Okay. So I've got my pencil. If you do it the wrong way, it just can't sew onto here. So really, this is what I'm trying to do is sew this onto here. Can you see that? There we can. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is mark the place that I'm going to have an opening so I can hand sew it shut. Okay. So it should be I think it says in the pattern three inches. Let's just see what I, hmm, I did like almost three and a half. I just eyeballed it. And then I remembered it says three inches in the pattern. Obviously it doesn't have to be exactly three inches. The turning you hole, just want big, them. slightly bigger than your hand. There you go. <laughs> so you're just gonna do a stitch down either side. Okay, so we're gonna do that first. One layer at a time. 
this is the little thing. So in the patterns, in newer patterns, the ones that um, our pattern writer Rose does, we call it stay stitching. So if you see, and it says to do stay stitching for the turning, turning gap, this is what we're talking about. In the older pattern, it just, I think, says stitch one layer. I didn't have the right words when I was doing it. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing here. So again, just one layer. I'm doing it just past where my marks are and I'm going, I have a hand back here that I'm kind of keeping a little tension on it so it doesn't gather up as I'm stitching it. Since it's one layer, it kind of wants to do that. Fabric's really good at gathering itself when it's one layer, no matter what kind of fabric it is. All right, so there I've got my turning gaps marked. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold this in half. Like that. Okay, so those need to match up again. And I'm going to go ahead and pin it down there. And down there, and I'm just trying to visually match up my ends. But then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double pin down this row. So when we're doing straight edges, straight seams that are long, I like to do this double pinning where I put pins in, two rows of pins parallel to that raw edge. And what that does is helps it so it doesn't move so much. Okay, so I'm gonna put another pin in right here at the corner and that keeps these together. So then when I start sewing, I have to take this pin out immediately. If I don't have a pin in here, all of this can flop around. So I'm gonna have this pin in here. When I put it underneath, I'll take this pin out, put my needle down, start sewing. All right, we'll do the same thing over here. A pin. And a pin. you're really paying attention to which direction you're pinning from so that they pull out of the machine, they pull out of the fabric as it's going through the machine easily. Right? Exactly. As a right hand person, if I pin further away from me, I'll put the pins in the right direction so that when I'm putting it through the machine, I can just pull them out like this. Okay. If I do it the other direction, so if I were to pin it, if I'm, I need to pin it that way, and I would pin it with my left hand down here. Does that make sense? Right. Okay. So, so otherwise, if I put the pins in backwards, I have to pull the pins out. So like if I pinned it, pin it the wrong way up here. So if I pin this direction, which is hard to do left with my right hand. Okay. So if I put it this way, as I'm putting it in, I have to take these pins out. So they really don't do me any good down to here. I've loosened it up. Got so it. if I leave the pins in this direction... They can I can get all the way up to here and I can sort of pull it out as I go if I need to really hold it. The very last like, second. At the very last second. Got that's it. the way I like to roll, apparently, as I was sewing until 40 seconds till the hour. Right before showtime. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sometimes I like to, yeah, wait till the very last minute. All right. So I'm going to sew this again with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to put my foot down, take my needle or my pins out, put my needle down. So now I know that it's secured and it's not going to go anywhere because this part is all kind of floppy now because I don't have a pin in here. Okay, so I'm going to go forward just a little and then go backward. Because this is digital, it likes to kind of suck in. So I'm going to try to get it to go past that. The other thing to do if you have trouble with it sucking into your machine and you don't have a stiletto or you're not comfortable putting your stiletto that close to your needle, which is, you know, dangerous, I will admit. Uh, you can use a leader ender, so just like a little scrap of cotton to kind of pull it as it goes through. Okay. So I'm going to come along here. And now I want it to line up with those lines that I stitched before. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball that, aim for it, hope for the best. Okay. And then I'm going to lift my foot. But not the needle, just the not foot. The needle, then you just pivot the foot. it on the needle. Yeah. And then I come off to the edge. And cut my thread and then I'll move it down here and what this does is it creates a little what we call an L gap and uh, it will make it easier to turn and also give me a place to stitch when I do my hand sewing no, one more Come on. there we go all right so then we're gonna go this way and finish it off Okay, so this, this pin that we were talking about with the double pinning, this other pin gets to sit here. And as I'm sewing, I can take this one out. Then I'm going to use my stiletto to hold this in position where I want it to be. But this one can slide right underneath the foot. It's nowhere near the needle, so it's not going to hit the needle and break anything. But it does hold my fabric in place as I sew, which is super helpful. All right. 
So now we've got our tube. That is the body of the pillow. This is totally morphable. So if you want it, this was the, remember, this was the um, 15 inches this way. That needs to stay the same. This was 12 and a half inches this way. If you wanted to make this longer, go ahead and make it longer. I don't care. Okay. This length, the 12 and a half can change all you want. So if you wanted a longer pencil, go for it. Got it. Okay. Like if you wanted to, if you mentioned using it for a bolster earlier, and if you wanted to match the depth of uh, a couch or a love seat or something. Yep. Especially if it was like, you know, in the teacher's lounge. Right. Jackie, I, I saw that <laughs> comment earlier. That's yep. so awesome. That's a super cute idea. Super cute. Okay. So now I'm just marking my quarter marks on here by folding it. Okay. So I folded it in half this way and found the other side. So I've got a little mark. So that's my halfway. Then I fold it this way, get the halfway to the halfway and I get my quarters. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing over here because this is the way I want to mark it or match it up when I'm sewing both the pencil top and the bottom on. Okay. And this halfway mark, so the, um, the halfway marks for this are different. You can't measure these before you sew it. No. Okay. Because you will get off. Yeah. Because of this quarter inch seam allowance. So this is now shorter. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Okay. And I, again, with the, the magic, watching you figure out the quarters without actually having to measure anything was excellent. <laughs> okay. It's Good. perfect. Good. All right. So now I want to I wanna pet it, figure out which way. So my fabric is going this direction. The nap is going this way. So this is going to be the end of my, um, my pillow. So let's do this end first since we're here. Okay, it doesn't really matter which way this goes, but I am going to put it just so that the my this is my bottom because the nap goes this direction. So I'm going to put this one next to my seam. Okay, no particular reason except that's what my brain wants to do. So I'm just going to do it. I'm going to go with it. <laughs> I'm going to make myself feel more comfortable with it. Right. You don't have to apologize to me for dropping pins on the ground. You're the one that's barefoot. I'm barefoot. <laughs> There's nothing I can do to help you right now nope. with the camera in my hand. So I'm just not going to slide my foot over. That's all. Okay. All right. So now I'm matching up my marks that were here. Okay. So if you remember on the pattern piece, there are quarter marks to transfer. And those are going to mark a, match up with the marks that I just made on the pencil body. Okay, and the reason I don't actually make any marks on the pattern there is kind of just because if you make a little bit bigger seam allowance, it'll be slightly different. You'll have to ease it a little differently. Okay, so I've got my quarters. And now I'm going to do in-betweens. Okay, so I'm going to do this here. So this is often how we pin lots of things. So this is how you would do it on any... Anything where you're going to use a tube and then sew the circle onto the bottom, which you could get pretty creative, but it's definitely used a lot for stuffies. And I kind of have to tug it just a little, get it to, to ease in there. But not tugging it too much, right? Because you mentioned earlier this, uh, this the digital cuddle, digital cuddle in particular will curl on the edges if you stretch it too much. Exactly. So at this point, I've got it. I've got it kind of held in. But because cuddle loves to move, I'm going to go ahead and do one more in between here. But I'm going to do it from the other side. So this one I'm pinning in from the back and to the front. And this every other from the front to the back to the front to the back mm -hmm. actually flattens this whole curve right back out again, right? Exactly, exactly. It'll flatten it out and make it curve, uh, curl around a lot better as I'm going through the machine. I don't have to fight each one of these little edges to keep it in place. So it works really, really nicely. Depending on the fabric, sometimes it'll start to really like kind of curl in and this keeps it nice and flat so it is definitely like a little bit of extra work so we're going to pin a little more but what that means is a little less work at the machine to try to keep it where I want to so it's really it's almost always a choice of fighting it at the machine or at the fighting it might be too strong of a word but you know you're going to have to manage it here or under the machine all right so now once I've got this like I said this is exactly how 
feetsies are going to look too on the stuffies. So this, when we have this circle, this is always a, a little bit of a challenge in classes. I like to sew it this direction so that I'm going to sew around this part. Okay. Okay. So that's the way I'm going to do it. I have definitely had in classes where people think it's easier to sew it the other direction. So if you try this way and you struggle, flip it over, see if you like it better sewing it this way. I don't. But um, there are definitely things that people's hands work differently. And sometimes yours will work better in one direction than mine will. And that is especially true if you're a lefty. Was there any place that you specifically started? Nope. Nope. And I didn't back You didn't have to start at the seam or anything. I don't like to start at the seam because it's thick and obnoxious to try to get started. Gotcha. So I like to start otherwise. And I'm just going to try to get it to be as circular-ish as possible. Okay. And I can kind of use these pins as little steering wheels. Oh yeah, a little you got you're using little using them like a handle right before you mm -hmm. take it out. Like she's putting a little pressure on there with her right hand. That finger is touching that pin and is driving the seam yep. allowance around the corner. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm just gonna keep going, bring it all the way around, and it will kind of be circular. Okay, the great thing about cuddle doesn't matter. It's close enough. Okay, so I can see a little pucker happening here. You okay, see that yeah, there? I see that. Right there. So all I'm going to do is lift my foot, straighten it back up again. All right. The one thing that I will tell you is if you start to see a pucker and cuddle and you keep going, that pucker will just grow. Okay, <laughs> so it's not going to go away. You're not going to ease it in or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and do it like this. I'm going to make that kind of feed in, and push that in, make it work, and then meet up with that. And then I'm going to over stitch it, back, back stitch, and then clip it. Okay, so I didn't back stitch when I first. Oops, I didn't back stitch when I first started. I just started stitching, then I stitched right back over where I started at, and that way I knew I would end at the right place. Okay. Got it. It's you know fairly good. Roundish. All right, it's roundish. That's Excellent. what we want. Um, just make sure that you haven't caught anything uh, weirdly. Sometimes this will fold down and get caught, and then you'll end up having a hole in there. If you've sewn it like this and just caught the edge of it in there, but there's no hole, you're fine. Leave it alone. All right? It doesn't have to be perfect. Because it's on the inside. It's on the inside. You just don't want <laughs> holes. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick my pencil lead down that tube. And I'm going to match up my seams. So this is a good good example of you can see the difference in the, the thickness of the fabrics. But the digital is the backing is just thinner. Okay. Hold on, I'm gonna swoop over some pins. There we go. I need I need one to get one of those little wands again. Remember where was that? I think it was the quilt shop. She had one of those wands for me. Oh, a little magnetic, mm -hmm. little magnetic wands. Great. It's probably better than you know. Trying to wave your whole circle around. <laughs> Probably. It's a little hard to grab. Okay. Also, it's stuck to your magnetic, so your, that is uh, true, magnetic my cutting math. board. Okay. So now I've got my, I've made my quarter marks. Okay. And then we're on the pattern. There's a tiny one right there. Trust me. And I'm going to put this together with the marks. It's one of my special pins. <laughs> Oh, yeah? Is that a magic pin? Yeah, I might have shown it over a few times. I can't quite get it in focus. I can see some holes in there. There you go. Yeah. Some tiny little stitches, a bunch of them. Do, do as she says. Okay. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes. <laughs> no sewing over your pins. <laughs> Don't sew over your pins. Don't sew over the metal part, especially. And if you sew over a pin, replace your needle right away. Okay. Sometimes it happens. Just replace your needle. All right, so now I'm going to get the, all those marks. So those were the marks that were on here. Okay, so these marks on the wooden tip are what I'm matching to the quarter marks on the body. Okay, and again, I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to just make them match in here. I'm going to do the halves, and then go back and do, I guess, the quarters between those two. So there's going to be a bunch of pins, and it will work really nicely. Okay, because we're using a quarter inch seam allowance too, we have less wiggle room. So with a half inch seam allowance, there's a little bit more wiggle. So if your seam isn't doesn't stay really accurate, you can, you know, you'll still catch it. But with the little one, we're gonna we're gonna need a little more pin. So you can see how this wants to curl in. 
Yeah, right so now it's that. got a, like a little wiggle all mm -hmm. the way around, right? But as soon as you do the pin from the opposite side in between, it it'll, basically flattens that right out fix again. It. Yep. I love it. Yep. It's super, super easy little little change of how I'm pinning that makes a huge difference in how it turns out. Okay. And this, I'm gonna try to get these to match up. So I'm actually gonna bring my bring a pin up here. And so you went through the seam allowance with that pin also? Or? I did. I'm kind of holding it because I want it to be flat. So I'm actually going to start with back here and nail this first and then go around. Got it. Okay. So kind of like we did with the lead. So I want to make sure that that part is accurate. So if I start on this one and I start over here, it could have gotten off by the time I'm over here. And normally I don't really care, but if I want those seams to match, which I do because that's one place that I'll get a little finicky about, then I want to start there and make sure I catch it. If that doesn't bother you, you can start anywhere you please. Okay, but this, um, I'll explain when we get the whole thing open, but this allows me to have a little bit more accuracy with the two seams that come together because we have a seam that comes together here and a seam that comes together with the red and the wood. So that's what I was talking about. This allows me more accuracy putting it together this way. Got it. All right, so now we can take this over. So you can see that that stands in or stands up a mm -hmm. lot better, a lot straighter, isn't curling in so much. And I can sew this a little better. All right, so now we're gonna take it over and sew it one more time. Now I'm just going to kind of lay these down under there, work it under. i got to find my seam. There we go. So many pins. So many pins. It's like Edward Scissorhands every time. That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> <laughs> like, careful. Okay. So I'm just going to sew. I'm going to start here. I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to sew over it. I'm not going to back stitch. I'm just going to come back around and stitch over that again. Now there are a million pins and we're just going to have to work our way through it and just take out pins as we go. I, I will say they will get caught up sometimes like back here on the walking foot, stuff like that. Just keep twisting it. It'll be fine. It's less, um, I, I prefer fighting my pins like that rather than I prefer fighting the fabric because yeah. even I took that pin out and already it wants to move on. Okay, so sometimes this will happen and your fabrics are gonna move. Don't panic, okay? If it's eighth of an inch off, nothing's gonna happen. All right, we can go back and fix things if we need to. But I would rather have too big of a seam allowance than not big enough. And just keep right on trucking. Just keep right on trucking all the way around in a circle. Okay, this is probably one that if you wanted to, you could, my, um, my free arm is actually pretty big, so some things don't fit around it very well. And I don't feel like this would fit around it super well. But if you had a smaller free arm, you absolutely could. And just let it circle around that. And, and just to reiterate again, on this entire project, you are using a quarter of an inch Wait, seam allowance. look what happened. What happened? I just sewed nothing. Uh-oh. Who's Did done you... this? Who's done this before? Anybody? Anybody sewn without a bobbin thread? What, what happened? What? Uh... What? 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 I was like, why is my seam allowance not attached? <laughs> Goodness gracious. Boo. All right. Well, who wants to watch Teresa pin all the way around again? Yay! Okay. Gosh. Dang it. How come you didn't catch that, Hawk? I did, did that. You and your, did, that. you and your eagle eyes. Oh, wait. Ellen's oh. the one with eagle eyes. She should have been here catching that. All right. Let me try it again. Jeez. I Look, not. I have one pin left. You got one all pin. the way around. Nothing. One pin. Because I realized, I was like, wait, those seam allowances are not attached together. What just happened? So, wait. There is. No, there's nothing attached. Right. But where's the why. bobbin thread? The bobbin is there now. I don't know why it didn't sew. There was thread on the bobbin. There was thread. Yeah. There's thread, right. but it just wasn't working. Wake up. Okay, so wake up. I'm sure everyone <laughs> has done this before. Not you, the machine. I was telling the machine, wake up. Oh, I know. It's sleepy. It was decided it wasn't going to bring up that bobbin for some reason. But I am, I'm pretty darn sure every single person who is watching this has done the same thing where you're like, oh, wait, how far did I sew without any thread? Uh, we totally far? needed to see this pinning exercise again, though. It was super important. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. We're going we're to triple. Triple teach this one today. So I'm going to get my seam or my marks to match up there. And we'll try it one more time because it's the last one that we have to do. And then we get the, to turn it, I, I'm which kinda, is the exciting part. I'm just kind of just glad that it didn't actually curl the edges of the fabric too much while we were trying to 
drag it through the machine for no reason. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it did fine. It didn't get weird at all. I will show if we um, if you can remind me when we're done here, I'll show how the how the curl happens. Okay. So because I work really hard not to make it happen. But I'll show how it does and how you guys can prevent it. Okay. Almost there. Look at that. That wasn't too bad. You did good. Thanks. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to stick this back under here. Try to catch those seam allowances. See if we can go around. I'm going to check it in like about 30 seconds. I mean, not even that long. As soon as I get around, I'm like, are you catching? Are you sewing? Please. It was nice how it stayed together so neatly, though, and made it look like it was actually sewing. <laughs> you know? Yeah, there was really not a convenient there is, there way. There is seam over there. I okay, see right, I'm coming around. Seam coming is around. happening. We're, we're confirming. We're probably not confirming anything. Well, I think you probably can see the seam, right? Nope. There it is. Ta-da. Ta-da. Okay. It is stitching real, this time. It's a real, it's a real seam. Goodness. It's not, not air thread. No, the worst. Invisible and, sewing that doesn't actually hold anything. And really not nearly as much fun as air guitar. No, no, not nearly as much fun. Although it might be as fun to watch. No. Okay, we're just going to work our way around. Get it pulled flat underneath out. Um, dual feed. So this is what I've got. I'm sewing with my baby lock crescendo and it has the digital dual feed, which is um, part of baby locks, um, higher end machines, which works really nicely. If you can, if you have a walking foot, you can use that. These um, seams, if you do not have a walking foot, you could probably just use your regular foot. Which is here. Just hanging out. Just hanging Feeling out. Feeling lonely. It's like the bullpen. It's like, put me in coach. That's right. It's like, nope, not going in. Not this time. Not this time, son. All right. So now I stitched all the way around. We're going to do the same thing and check it. Make sure I don't get any weird puckers in here because these will be obvious and I don't want that to happen. All right. So then I'm going to go in here and grab the little tip and pull it all the way out. Look at how cute that is. Nice. It's pretty adorable. Road, road kill pencil. Road kill pencil. So now I can go ahead and I can come in here and I can push push these out, make sure that everything comes out. So little seam turner, Hera marker thing. Yep, exactly. That tool right there, which I've seen her use a million times. Yep, it is a great one. I really love this one because it has the points on it, but it also has the curve on it. So whichever thing you're trying to do is push around part out or not, you're there. So now... We've got the little pencil, and I've got another pencil somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah, we have an MVP Thank you. In, the, in the audience that, that took the time to, to stuff this one. That's right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, now I have to get my needle out of here without unthreading it. Good luck. Oh, is it in there? Is it hiding? It's in here somewhere. Come on. We're following it. It's the, the, the needle tracking cam. Oh, there it is. See, it's threaded, so I had to hold on to both. Both threads. <laughs> oh, there we go. Do you see how it wants to go back? Look at that. That's a magnet, man. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, let me go back. I'm like, no, you're with me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now I've got it. We'll see if I have enough. Yeah, I should. I threaded it before, but maybe not quite enough thread. All right. So I've got double a double thread on here. All right, and I'm going to go in. I'm going to start underneath here where it was already sewn. I'm going to kind of come up through the seam allowance. And that's where that little L bracket seam was, right? Yep. And then you've got the stay stitching lines that you're going to follow. Yep. And it basically just sort of presets the seam allowance. Exactly. So you, you can see on here where my seam allowance is actually going to be. You can see the stitching line on it. And all I'm going to do, this is actually a really good one to be able to see, is I'm going to put a stitch on either side of that line on either on the outside of either side so this is the, the latter stitch this is the latter stitch i'm just going to do a little stitch on each side and this one got stuffed with the uh, silky polyfill which is the one i like the best so there are a couple of different ones that fairfield makes so they make the regular polyfill they make the ultra plush and they make the silky 
and I like the Silky the best, but the Ultra and the Silky are much better than um, just that regular polyfill that you're probably familiar with. Hey, Helen, we don't talk about that magnet very much, but I'm going to swing over here for just a second. That thing is called a Zirkle. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I think that their website is thezirkle.com, but a lot of quilt shops sell them, and they are fabulous. One of the things I really like about it with the flower head pins, especially, is that it seems like almost always they end up, uh, the, the, the pins end up sticking to the magnet with the, the flower head out. Mm -hmm. Not maybe not always, not always but you but, can definitely get it that way and it'll stay that way. What I like is that I can be sewing and I can get ready to, to yeah. go over there. Okay. I yeah. can just chuck it. Okay. She, okay. Here we're we're gonna try. Great. Gonna try. So you just chuck it. No, one on, one off. There we go. Okay. So <laughs> when I'm sewing, I can just sew and then I just chuck it. It's great. I don't have to be accurate. It's wonderful. It's, just just like the whole cuddle thing. Just is is it close? It's close. Yeah. I've and I've had that one since they first came out. So probably I think about seven or eight years I've had that guy. Okay, so we're just doing a little stitch. You can see the ladders. Those ladders we're talking about. Just pull it. There you go. Boom. Pulls it nice and nice and tight. Okay, so these are little stitches that I'm doing because this is will get, you know, squeezed and pressed and all sorts of stuff, um, and it will, you know, be worn. Okay. So those will just tuck right inside. I'll keep going. I don't pin it, as you can see that. I don't. I don't pin it shut first. I just kind of try to keep an eye on getting it to evenly feed as I'm going. And if I see that one side is a little bigger, I'll just kind of bring it this way a little and make it kind of bring in this little. It's really, imp uh, really, I don't know, it's really good to note that, that that extra stay stitch that you added in, as much as that seems like it's an extra step right now, it's showing because it's, it's showing its usefulness because by the time yes. you're done, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between your hand stitching and the machine stitching. Right. Basically, it just hides it in there really, really nicely. So this is what I say. This is my one time that using the red. I'm like, dang it, I can see the red. I'll hide it in there really well. Okay. I and then I'm going to kind of come over, grab both seams. Oh, did a little that. knot. Did a little knot. I'll do another little knot because I don't trust myself. And then, actually, I don't trust sewing. Sometimes <laughs> I don't trust my own. Don't sewing. turn your back on it. Don't. That somebody told me that about my embroidery machine, and they were so right. And then you just kind of drove the needle out the side, sort of randomly. Yep. And just then, to get it stuck in there. And then cut the extra thread off. Okay. So now the tails are buried. Buried. Oh, look at that. Okay. So well, now you've got fun. it. Look at that. That's super cute. Ta -da. Yay, ta -da. <laughs> okay. So that's what you've got. So this one is stuffed with the um the the royal silk um where you grab that the poly silky polyfill. Oh, we have both of them. That's so funny. Oh, both packages. Oh, both packages. Royal oh silk, that's great. Because royal is silk actually a good, this is is good, now uh, silky, a good note. Silky polyfill. Same stuff. So, same so soft, the old yumminess. package. Old package. So old new package. package. New package. Look for this. Same great stuff. Same great stuff. It's really lovely. I will say that the um, the Ultra is really good for this too because it has a little bit more oomph. So the Silky I like a lot. Where are you going? Oh, okay. Isn't that it? He's going, <laughs> I think so. They're not going to open their package. No. But this is the other one. Okay. This one <laughs> is sort of the in-between between Polyfill, which is really kind of... Scritchy. Stiff, scritchy. Um, it's not as soft and yummy as the Silky. So this, this one is kind of in between. So it gives more body. So I kind of like it for things. I like it for stuffed animals. And I like it for things like this, where you want a little bit of um, body to it and not be too squishy. Like we talked about with the um, conversation hearts a few weeks ago is when right. I use the silky poly fill in it, it got too squishy. So with the stuffed animals, when I'm using them, when I want to give them like to a baby or something, I want them to be super soft and squishy and yummy. So I'll use the silky in it. You can use more and get it stiffer. But if you use it, it'll be, it's nice and soft. The Ultra is kind of, kind of that medium. All right. So there are the three variations. So this is a regular polyfill. This is the old silky polyfill and then the Ultra. Okay. So all of those are variations all made by Fairfield. They just have different qualities. All right. So this one, um, this one is like real squishy because of it, because there's not a ton in there. It's nice. Um, but it, you could pack it really full and it'd be 
hard. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So now I have one more thing I want to show you guys, because now you can do a whole bunch of these. And honestly, like we were talking about doing it for kids, or you could do it, you know, for your artist friends, um, that you have all these different colored pencils. Hi, artist friend. (laughs) (laughs) So you could do all sorts of these. I think this would be really fun because you could get like a yard of this and then buy different tips. So you could have a purple one and a yellow one and a blue one and a green one. And they would all be like super cute. Okay. But did you you, also have uh, nap time in kindergarten? Did I? Yeah. I'm sure I did. I don't remember. Yeah. It was a long time ago. That was a, a lot of a lot of decades ago. Anyway, of um, ago. yeah. <laughs> but this would be great. A lot of naps ago. That's naps exactly ago. right. Okay. Super cute. Do this. All right. Then we have this variation, which you can make yourself a number two pencil. So this pattern is also available on our website. And there is a short tutorial that is available on YouTube on how to make this. It is basically the same, except in addition to so this, you can see the yellow is the same length as this one. We just added two more sections, one with the silver and one with the pink, so that you can have the silver band and the eraser. So exact same process of making this. Um, whoops. Um, <laughs> just got a little bit longer. Okay. So you could totally, totally make this. This is the, when we first made this one, I was like, I need to make a number two pencil because I'm the writer. He's the artist. So you can make it with whatever colors you want. So this is a brighter version. This is the more pastel version, whatever you'd like to do. I love it. I think it's super cute. This one of the part things- sort of starts to smell like a scrap buster. Just yes, bit, you could right? totally, yeah, it'd be an absolutely great thing, especially with this, if you have a print and you have scraps of the of a solid, absolutely. The other thing you could do is you could um, stitch lines around here that would create those, you know. Oh, you could sure. get a little bit. You get fancy, get embroidery on there. fancy with it. Yeah, you could just do straight stitches too. Super cute. So anyway, yeah. these are two variations on a theme. Very fun. You can do all sorts of things with it. Um, I love this project. Okay, they have kits available here if you want to order them. Again, the number is on the screen. <laughs> it will be. It's, it exists. The banner exists. And we're there. <laughs> there totally. we go. Yes. So if you want a kit of this one, you can absolutely order that from the Quilters Market here in Tucson. So don't forget that. All right. So do we have a winner? I can't believe I did it. Yay. We're all the way. Yeah. It's so good. Even though I had to redo that whole scene. <laughs> Today's winner is. Today's winner is. is Pamela W. Congratulations, Pamela. You are the winner. So if you will get a hold of us through Facebook, we will send you a get through through Facebook Messenger. Send Shannon Fabrics your um, mailing information, your phone number, email, all of that good stuff. We will ship you a beginner box, which includes, like I said, three one yard cuts of fabric the book on how to sew six different projects, lots of information, as well as needles, thread, and pins to get you started. So it's a super great beginner kit. Okay, so we will be doing that. Uh, We will choose a winner here afterward. Yeah, our live studio audience gets the same opportunity. That's right. uh, But just a smaller smaller pool to win from. So that's great. All of you online are fighting among, you know, pattern and some people. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that we will be uh, next week, we will be at our surprise location, which I'm still not going to tell you. And I want you guys to guess. Okay. But we'll be somewhere between here and Sunshine Quilt in Houston, Texas. So Cup, um, in spring. Cup, what Cup, did I say? You did. Wrong one. Wrong one. Cupcake. Cupcake. I don't know what I said, but Cupcake Quilts in spring, Texas is where we're going to be uh, next week. And um, or not next week, two weeks from now. And we're super excited about that. I saw the samples today and I got fabric to make my own samples. I'm very excited. What's about that it. project? It's a mermaid tail. It's gonna be super fun. Oh. So I'm really excited. So next week we're talking all about clothing with cuddle. And so that'll be really great. We have two special guests who are coming on who are pattern designers and who do a lot of apparel sewing themselves as well as I've sewn some. Um, if you have you were in my Lux Cuddle jacket class online, then um, this will be little more for that, which will be fun and lots of ideas on how you can use cuddle in a variety of different clothing. So that should be super fun. Like I said, guess where we're going to be. It'll be fun. We'll tell you next Tuesday when we show up there. Yeah. Um, If anybody guesses it, we'll send you a kit. How's that? Totally. I will send you one of my personal kits because I'll be so excited. We're just, we're just making, we're just making (laughs) this up. It's a surprise location and now it's a surprise giveaway. If you can guess where we're going to be next week. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> It'll be great. So we will be there we'll be back next Tuesday. Um, like I said, talking all about clothing with cuddle. And uh, until then, oh, and thank you to the Quilters Market for uh, inviting us today. 
I appreciate it. Um, thanks for having us. And uh, the we wanted to talk to you just a little and mention making the world a softer place. So I'm thankful for all of you for joining us and making the world a softer place. You can find out more about our nonprofit by visiting makingtheworldasofterplace.org or softerplace.org. We'll take you to the same website. You can find out more about what we do for charity work, including lots of stuff that we do for the, uh, the winter you probably were around for at the fundraiser there. Kind of like we're doing with Rustic Horseshoes. Don't forget about that fundraiser too. Okay, go check out the blog on that one. All right, until next week, right? Yeah, let's do it. All right, until next week, happy sewing. Happy sewing. Thank you. Thank you.